Good morning. Happy Monday. I'm just making sure that everything is good to go on my end. If you're here with me live, I would love to see your greeting, say hello. And if you are watching the recording. I'd love to have you say hello as well. I think that it's important for us to stay connected. If you are new to the Actualization Zone, welcome home. I'm Dr. Robin McKay, and this community is for bright, talented, intuitive women leaders who are really tired of dulling down their light to make other people feel comfortable, who are really ready to lean into all of their gifts, talents, and abilities, and to be seen in the world, to stop walking on eggshells so that other people can feel comfortable as well around us is another thing that we all have in common. So if that's you, you're in the right place, please say hello. And today is our weekly weather report. I don't, of course, report on the actual meteorologic conditions in any of our locations, although I do love that still. Uh, what I look at are non-physical influences that we can harness, take advantage of, just be aware of this week as we as we head into the week, uh, so that we have the support, the energetic support, in order to make shifts in our lives, in order to do our best work in the world, and so on. So that's who I am. That's why we're here together today. And today is, by the way, September nineteenth. If you can believe it. Oof. Q3 is almost over. And so this week I was consulting with the guides last night about this. Um, oh, by the way, um, yeah, I have a PhD in psychology and I'm also a clear channel have been since I was a little girl. And I have, my methodologies always bridge science and spirit, reason and intuition, logic and emotion and so on, and they have forever. And so I like to use Oracle cards as a way to kind of anchor in the information that is gonna be coming through today. Uh, as always, take what works and leave the rest. This is perspective. And with anything, it's like, we want you to wanna to invite you to make your own decisions, to really tune into what's right for you. And if this doesn't work for you, that's cool. Sending you lots of love. All right. So as I was talking to my guides last night about this reading, there were a couple of key energies that came up, which I'll get to in just a second. But the first one, oh, I'm working with the Starseed Oracle this time. And that's by also by Rebecca Campbell. I just love her. I love her work. So the first one that we're getting today is uh, the card to wait, to wait. Um, one thing I know for sure about smart, talented women leaders is that we have a level of impatience that is quite pronounced. And as a visionary, which you quite likely are a visionary, um, one of the great challenges is to be able to see something in your mind's eye and then to not have it immediately materialize a la I dream of genie into your physical experience. And yet the 3D world that we're living in is a pretty slow moving energy. It's kind of like a, a lazy river versus, you know, a, an enormous falls or something like that where the river goes or where the water goes really quickly. So as you're waiting for whatever it is, it could be waiting for to hear on a new position. It could be waiting to line up with your divine life partner. It could be waiting to um, call in your ideal clients. It could be waiting for something else, waiting for something else to materialize, whatever that is. Um, what, what occurs to me about that is that sometimes things are not always in your control. A lot of times, actually, things are not always in our control. We are actually co-creators in this universe. We're not solely in charge of our creations. And, um, what that message is really about is to remember that things are being woven behind the scenes that will be very supportive of whatever it is you're wanting to materialize or actualize into your life. So as you're waiting, it's not with 
it's not with the attitude that you had when you were a little kid, when your mom told you, oh, just be patient. Just be patient. What it means is to stay in the creation, stay with the creation. Just like a farmer, after she tills the, the ground and plants the seeds, has to wait for the harvest. She doesn't ignore the field. She doesn't ignore the crops. She waters, she weeds. She blesses them. She checks the weather reports. She does all the things that are associated with the, with the harvest, but she still has to wait for the harvest. And so too is the case for you. So continue to water your seeds. Continue to hold the highest and best outcomes in your mind's eye. Continue to do the things in the service of your heart's desire. And just remember that if it hasn't materialized yet, that quite likely there are some things that are being woven behind the scenes that will be very supportive of you. So that's the first thing. The second thing is this. This is um, something that just is a really important reminder this week. It's the courageous peony. Can you imagine that big peony flower over your head? But the courageous peony is about a reminder of this. And this is so important for our community. Remember that you're multifaceted. Remember that you have a very unique nature. And we see that in the personality assessments that I've given women like you forever, is that we have very unique personalities in the population. We have to remember that. We have to remember that we're multifaceted. And above all, because of those things, it's time to let yourself be seen. Now, how does that, how does that play out? Well, oftentimes with, with smart, intuitive women like myself, like you, we're so good at figuring out what other people need from us in order for them to feel better that we just do that. I call it the chameleon syndrome. We kind of become a version of ourselves that fits the situation or the circumstances. Well, the time for the chameleon is over. It's now, I would say chameleon season is over and it's time for unicorn season to begin. You're a unicorn and, or a peony, if you will. And I think that one of the greatest challenges of being somebody who is multifaceted, who can figure out what's needed from any, any group or any person and become that, is that you can get into people pleasing kind of, you can get into not understanding or remembering even who you are because you've been so many other things for so many different people. So just know that what's here now is it's time to just be your own self. It's time to be your unicorn self and to allow other people to see you, even if you are not for them. And that actually happens to be the next card. You're not for everybody. And that is an important reminder. I think especially in leadership, there can be this acquiescence of personal power and acquiescence of heart's desires in order to kind of stabilize the community, to not rock the boat, to keep everybody happy. But it comes at quite a cost. And one of the things that I've had to learn across the time that I've been in leadership, and maybe you can relate to this, is that at some point you have to be willing to not be liked. At some willing you have to be, at some point you have to be willing to piss people off. For the, for the highest good of the project, for the highest good of the vision, sometimes you're not going to be the popular one on the block. And it can be painful, especially if you've got ADHD and you've got some rejection-sensitive dysphoria. Um, it can be a difficult path to walk, and yet it is an important one. Because unless and until you do so, the fullest expression of your life, of what you, you came here to do, is not going to materialize. So all of those heart's desires that you have will be sitting out in the ethers waiting to be brought in. But unless and until you make the decision to allow yourself to be seen, to remember that you're not for everybody, you're not Nutella, not everybody's gonna like you and be okay with that. Be okay, be comfortable in your own skin about how you're showing up in the world. And as long as you can sleep with you at night, which obviously you have to do, as long as you can sleep with you at night, I think that's, the, that's a really key component to being okay with people not liking you, worrying about what people think of you, 
I could be worried about that. I could be worried that, you know, here she is, she's got a PhD in psychology and she's using Oracle card as who does she think she is? Well, yeah, I have a PhD in psychology and I use Oracle cards, both and I'm multifaceted. And if somebody thinks that, then they're just simply not for me and I'm not for them. The harmonics are off. But if you're here with me and maybe you don't have a PhD in psychology, but maybe you're an engineer or you're a physician or you're some other kind of professional, highly educated person and you happen to like Oracle cards, that's your place. That's This is a place for you. This is home. Let's see, last one for the week. I'm just shuffling. Hang on. Okay, here we go. These are both portal cards. So this one is the portal card and this is a reminder that portals are opening now Every door is a portal, every physical door is a portal, and every entrance, every exit is an entrance someplace else. So you can even start today activating your awareness of portals, awareness of opportunities, just by every time you walk through a doorway, just remind yourself that you're walking through a portal, that the portal is open. And the key here to walking through any portal is a decision. The key to walking in through the portal to your best possible timeline is a decision. And speaking of decisions, I wanted to share this with you as we close today. I was over on LinkedIn and one of my favorite authors is Dan Pink. He quoted an economist and I don't remember who the economist was, but the economist gave some very good advice on decision making. And the, the economist said, when you, when you have to make a decision, Choose the option that doesn't lead to the status quo. If you choose the option that leads to the status quo, you just create more of the same. So the decision point, when anything comes up for you that you have a decision about, choose the decision that doesn't lead to the status quo, that's going to bring in some fresh energy, some fresh ideas, some fresh opportunities, right? Isn't that great advice? Choose the decision that doesn't lead to the status quo. All right, there's your weather report for the week. If you found this helpful, I'd love to hear from you in the comments, or you could take a screenshot of this, tag me in the post and share it with your community because we are a grassroots community that is always open to inviting more people like you and me into it to welcome them home as well to this beautiful actualization zone. And if you're not a member of the actualization zone, because you're watching me on YouTube, Go over to Facebook and type in to the search bar, Actualization Zone, it'll pop right up. There are a couple of questions that you'll have to answer and then we will be joyfully welcoming you into the community of intelligent, intuitive leaders who are ready to create a new world for themselves and other people. I'm your host, Dr. Robin McKay, and I will see you next week. <music>